Welcome back guys, CSR NET module 1 and we are talking about biochemistry and this uh, video is going to talk about nucleosides and nucleotides. We will be doing a separate video for DNA, RNA and those parts but let's talk about nucleotide and nucleosides. Now once we talk about nucleotide and nucleoside that normally what we know is once we get a nucleoside uh, which are the you know building blocks when you connect all of them we finally produce nucleic acids. You know, nucleosides once they are hydrolyzed they produce purines or pyrimidines or they can produce along with that pentose sugar so actually nucleoside is consisting of base and pentose sugar pentose sugar means ribose sugar obviously uh, for dna it is uh, and these are the building block for dna and rna both this thing very easy very basic now atp or adenosine triphosphate acts as the most abundant form of nucleotide that is available in, 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 in our body which helps in the production of nucleic acid in vivo, the synthesis. That's why and this is the most abundant one that's why I put it in the red color there. It's very very important. Now in this nucleic acid conformation, once you get the nucleic acid, the most important thing about the nucleic acid is uh, the backbone of nucleic acid. That's a very very important structure, you know. The backbone is consisting of phosphate, right. So phosphodiester backbone forms to be most important part. In the backbone that we know the phosphodiester linkage or phosphodiester backbone, you can see why it is important because and there are some important properties you know important properties like the, the, it is hydrophilic in nature remember because it it won't interact with water well it is hydro hydro it, it actually interacts with water well uh, it's hydrophilic because it's charged and the charge of this backbone is negative because you know backbone is constructed with phosphate group and phosphate group contain a negative charge in it so that's why phosphodiester backbone and phosphate groups so everything is fine there and it is polar in nature that's why it is hydrophilic similar thing polar hydrophilic polar means obviously it is having some biasness with with you know different poles like you know they can interact with hydrophilic or water in that sense and in this backbone as it is negative charge in nature during the denaturation process it it helps in repelling those DNA strands from each other and can help the DNA strands segregate it and that is important for many molecular biology techniques okay now uh, besides this backbone structure of nucleic acids what else I want you to understand and that is you know uh, the base ratio that's very very important the base pairing inside the DNA and the Watson Creek base pairing is telling us that guanine always pairs with cytosine adenine always pairs with G, uh, you know thymine so that's that's the rule of thumb but according to Shargaff's rule of uh, you know base pairing and ratio is that always in a DNA or RNA whatever you can see if this thing is working for the DNA adenine plus guanine so the total concentration of adenine guanine divided by the total concentration of thymine and cytosine equals to 1. That means uh, here all the time you can you can find that adenine plus guanine equals to thymine plus cytosine and that's kind of true in all senses. Most of the cases in general cases, in an uh, exceptional case that may vary but most of the cases that's the true thing. Now uh, there are many many problems that may ask, may be asked from the Shardigaf's rule. They might tell you that let's say A uh, is present 20% or A and G is present 50%, uh, 40%, what will be the ratio for C, what is the percentage of C, what is the percent of T. For example, A plus G is let's say 40%, uh, so what is the percentage of T there. So A plus G is 40, so let's stop the, the part is you know G plus C that is 60. So in that case, each of them that is T and C will be kind of if it is distributed in the same fashion, it will be 30, 30 and something like that. So that's how the questions can be asked. And another thing after this ratio, what else is important about uh, DNA and nucleic acids and that is you know uh, the degradation, I mean the denaturation of the DNA and the complexity of the DNA and TM or melting temperature found to be very very important thing to understand. If we look at here, the normal thing is, um, you know, in normal conditions, DNA is double stranded. Once it is heated, it can be denatured, right? And the denaturing agent for the DNA not only can be heat, but also many other things like ethanol, heat, urea, and pH. All of these things can actually denature DNA. Uh, accessing or increasing the concentration can denature or separate two strands apart from each other. You know the DNA strands are uh, they are actually attached by a hydrogen bonding, and the hydrogen bond between A and T are 2 and the hydrogen bonding between G and C are 3. So melting temperature or TM 
is found to be the temperature at which half of uh, the strands or half of the concentration of the DNA that is present is getting denatured in the solution. And that is mostly depend on GC content of uh, DNA because you know GC content found to be most effective in uh, you know uh, during uh, segregation of the strand because GC are attached with each other by three hydrogen bonds. So if there are more GC, they'll be tightly attached. If there are less GC present, they'll be very loosely attached. That's why it found to be very effective. And uh, stability is also depends on GC because once there are a lot more GC uh, content there in DNA, it increases or uh, it increases uh, that base stacking interaction. The base stacking interaction is the interaction between the base pairs that are being there. So for example, let's say G with C there, A with T there. So, so, so the interaction between those bases side by side or parallelly is called the base stacking interaction and that will be increased if GC is there more. That's why the stability is also relied on GC. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at here the effect, uh, some effect called hyperchromic effect. And the hyperchromic effect means again the denaturation. And hyperchromic effect suggests that uh, huge increment of the absorbance at 260 nanometer because you know DNA RNA they actually receives light uh, more or absorbs light more in 260 nanometer and proteins actually absorb them in 280 nanometer. Now, actually, what happens uh, during the exposure to 260 nanometer if uh, the absorbance uh, or the optical density value or absorbance of or the light increases rapidly, hugely, that is called the hyperchromic effect after the denaturation process of DNA. And that suggests that the, after the denaturation, they increase the amount. I mean, the bases are now op openly exposed. As they're exposed, they will absorb more light. So the OD value, optical density value increases. And that's the reason. And during that process also, it, you know, in, as it increases optical density, along with that, it decreases velocity. Because, you know, once the DNA is denatured, they're coming out, the, the, sorry, the viscosity, not velocity, the viscosity actually gets down in that sense. And the previous kind is more viscous, now it's less viscous. So that's called the hyperchromic effect. And this is all about uh, nucleic acids and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.